Home Depot. This is my brand new 2005 Chevy Kodiak C4500 with a Lifeline Highliner 3 ambulance box. I bought this at 81,000 miles for $18,500. And my goal is gonna be to convert this into a tiny home to travel and camp and work and live in. This box design is one of the best for doing a conversion like this because of the overall size and also the layout of the external compartments. It's 8 feet wide, which is pretty standard, and has just over 72 inches of headroom, which is pretty hard to find. And the length of the box is about 14 feet. So overall, it's just about as large as you can get for Type 3 ambulance boxes. The compartment layout is also very nice. Almost all boxes have a tall oxygen compartment right here, and these next two are nice because they're only half height, which gives you more room on the inside. Here, there's also almost always a full height compartment on the right next to the side door. This compartment is almost always a pass-through cabinet to the inside of the box, which can be accessed from both the side door and the inside. I've taken that cabinet out already. Here's where I keep some objects. It's also pretty standard to have a full height compartment here on the back right for a backboard. I've been storing... I've been storing stuff in, in here. This compartment used to be uh, this deep all the way up but I cut it to half depth for the top half of the cabinet to make more room on the inside. Also, we've got this nice little bonus compartment, which is great. Back over here, I'll show you what I've done so far in here. Uh, this is my electrical compartment. Here I've got two Tesla Model S battery modules, a bunch of charging hardware and control hardware. This on the left side is some of the wiring that I moved from the old electrical cabinet. 1600 watts of solar on the roof. I can go into more detail about all of this when it's done, but for now, basically what this is, is a PC running Home Assistant, and that connects to sensors and relays to control everything. Doing it this way is nice because you don't need a bunch of physical switches to control everything, and instead, uh, you can build an interface on a tablet that connects to everything. So for example, here's my cabin lights. Here's the light for this compartment in here. And of course, I've also hooked it up to all the emergency lights on the truck. In this next cabinet, this is plumbing. Here's a 55 gallon water tank with intake filters, drinking water filters. This is hot water heater. That's an air compressor, pressure tanks. And down here is my two pumps and a block with a ton of valves on it. The reason for all this complexity is because there's gonna be a bunch of ways to configure the system. For example, you can intake from a pressurized hose here, or you can connect a pump in line with this so you can pump from a natural source and intake through these filters. Or if you're in some situation where you're running very low on water, then you can also intake from the gray tank, which is mounted underneath. 
<laughs> it's above the drive shaft and it was very hard to get up there. You could intake from your great tank, but just for your non-potable supply and still keep your fresh tank as strictly potable supply. Other configurations you could have are a fresh tank bypass where you just use the pressure of the inlet as your plumbing pressure and you don't need to use the pumps and you don't need to use the tank. Another configuration you could do, for example, is a gray tank bypass where your gray water dumps immediately on the ground and by intaking from the gray tank, the gray tank is converted into an extended fresh tank. So now you have 55 plus 25 gallons of fresh capacity. All right, that's enough plumbing. And my last compartment, this is just storage. Yep. Okay, let's go inside. So I think this really shows you how doing this in an ambulance can be a lot nicer than doing it in a van. On a van, you have all kinds of weird contours to build off of and pretty much no flat surfaces. And this is nothing but flat surfaces and easy studs to build off of. It's also all aluminum, so there's nothing to worry about rusting in here. The only steel here is the Chevy cutaway van chassis that this is mounted on. When I was researching doing this project, it was pretty hard to find images of what these boxes look like when they're all stripped down, so I knew what to expect. Um, so if you're thinking about doing something like this, then this is what you can expect. A lot of these boxes have this channel going down the middle to run wiring. And this box was also pretty well insulated almost all the way around, including in the floor. So I've got this temporarily covered, but I cut out this portion of the floor so I can recess the shower pan into the floor. So I've got more headroom in the shower, but this is the layers of the box construction. This is the very bottom. This is what you see underneath the truck. And you've got two inches of XPS and then a top layer and then a plywood subfloor. So my layout is gonna be a shower here with two doors, so it's a pass-through to the front, and also a door at the side for a toilet to slide out into the shower space for you to poop in the shower. Above the toilet will be a laundry machine. Over here, this is kitchen, refrigerator, sink, oven either up here or down there. Here's that cabinet that I cut and re-welded to half depth. This height is the same as this height so the bed can be across the back. A bench here, and this is probably some sort of additional table. The gist of my electrical so far is we've got a circuit over here for a laundry machine and an exhaust fan, which is plugging into here. That's an exhaust vent that was already on the truck. And a bunch of circuits over here for the kitchen and one circuit over here for that side. <clears throat> I've also got 12 and 5 volt lines, so I've got auxiliary 12 volt power here and then 5 volt USB-A and then two USB-C, which are not popped in here yet. These are keystone jacks, by the way. And my lighting, which I've got temporarily in here. There's four now, but there's going to be 10 in total, I think. And these are... Ow! Intended to be uh, retrofit 120 volt fixtures. Um, they came with a little 120 volt to 16.5 volt transformer, I think. And I cut the cable off that transformer and I'm using my own 16.3 volt converter in the electrical cabinet to power these. I think these are Gladopto 6 watt RGB LED flush mount fixtures. These are pretty cool because once you've got a Hue bridge, you can also control them through Home Assistant. Make them whatever crazy colors you want. 
so all the control for the lighting and the plumbing and the exterior lights, everything will be just on a little tablet interface, probably on this wall right here. And yeah, I think that is pretty much, pretty much it for now. I think I'll post again when there's more progress to be seen. All right. It should be noted that my electrical and plumbing systems are arguably way more complicated and expensive than they need to be. And definitely a lot of these ideas are very untested. So until I actually try and see how they work in practice, uh, definitely do not take this as a guide or advice. Um, so we'll just see later how these turn out and if the added complexity actually is worth it. Come in. Where'd the cat go? Oh, she's over here. Oh, there she goes. You're free! <laughs> I'm playing on the drums. He is smart, never ever dumb. Doing electrical engineering. He is always hiding there. Turn right.
How are you doing back there, good freak? I'm fine. How are you? Are you recording me? Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go and get some food. 